Hey everybody, welcome to Meet Firebase, the show where you get to meet the Googlers that make Firebase happen. My name is Doug, and with me on the show today is Raj Gundudra. Hey, Doug. Raj, thanks for joining me on the show. Likewise. And um, you and I just got back from the Firebase Summit in Madrid, so I'm sure you all have heard the big announcements. Uh, there was one announcement in particular. Uh, you were involved with it. Could you tell me what that was? That's the most exciting one. Mm -hmm. Firebase extensions. So I've been working on this uh, product for the last almost a year since I joined Google. So now it's out, and we're so excited that uh, it's out there and people are using it. OK. Could you tell me, in your own words, what what does extensions do? It's kind of a it's kind of a it's it's not like a product like the other Firebase products. Yeah. Good question. So it's like a you know the like a prepackaged bundles of code that saves ton of time for developers when they're working on common use cases. For example, as a developer, I want to resize my images. I wish I had something that can do this automatically. Now you go, now you have an extension, which is written by Google, and test it and trust it so you can use it in your project. So it, it saves you a ton of time in your regular app development. And moreover, it's configurable. Like if you want to customize for your project, you can easily do it. Second, it's uh, open source. So suppose you want to extend it, add more functionality, feel free to do it. But more importantly, it can integrate with Firebase and GCP products. There you go. Now we have a powerful product that can allow you to extend your products by using the, all these extensions. OK, so you mentioned resizing images. And I know we launched with how many did, uh, did we launch with? We launched with nine extensions. Nine. So what are a couple other ones, just to get a sense of what this product can do? So the popular ones, at least what I'm hearing is, uh, Image resizing is one of the popular one. BigQuery export, where you can export the data. OK, That's BigQuery it. from, so? Firestore. So Firestore. So you have a collection in Firestore, and you can export that export to BigQuery. BigQuery. So then you can query that, that data more effectively. Yes, okay. that's the most popular one. A third one is uh, user deletion, especially for the GDPR and sort of things, where you can uh, easily delete the data from your storage or okay. other places. So in the US, we're not affected by anything like that. But developers in Europe uh, very much affected by that. So what is so in, in summary, what does that extension do to help developers so, deal with GDPR? If you have any user, you deactivate or delete the user, it automatically deletes any of the user data. So so that, that helps you clean up any of the underlying the data for the user. OK, so if the user deletes their account, everything is wiped out yes. so they don't have to worry about things being left over yes. the, unnecessarily. OK, well, uh, yeah, definitely go check those out. Like I said, there's nine extensions. So uh, I believe in the Firebase console, we have a list of yes. uh, all of the extensions you can choose from. And we're adding new ones, right? So Absolutely. it's not just the nine. It's going to be more in the future. More coming. There are, so the team is extensively working on these extensions. So. Hope to see you. Yeah, yeah, check that out. Um, you're from Hyderabad. You're at Google now. What was your overall journey through there? Because it seems like that's both a lot of time and distance across there. What was what, What's the story with you? Good question, Doug. I think my uh, when I was growing up, there was always this dream of coming to the US. And it's mostly parents' dream as well. They always wanted us to go to better places. Mm -hmm. So kind of coming to US was an aspiration. So I, after finishing my undergrad, I took a job. I came here and worked here, especially in the Bay Area, then spent some time. I did mostly engineering work in the beginning of my career, built a lot of software like for stock exchanges and wrote software for automation primarily. Uh, then after doing for a few years in engineering, I took management jobs. Then I realized I probably need to get a business degree uh, so that I can perform better in my management roles. So okay. I went to UC Berkeley, Haas School of Business. I did my MBA there. In the college, we co-founded a startup. Uh, oh, it's part of the program. Not part of the program, but they encouraged us to start oh, companies. Oh, so right after that, they, yeah. so they, they strongly encouraged you to say, now that you've finished the program, you yeah. should go. Yeah. Like, do something with that. Yes. Four of us uh, from uh, MBA colleagues, we started a company. And that got shortlisted and selected in the Skydeck, one of the startup accelerator in the Berkeley, where they give you space and uh, facility and support so that you can okay. go there. So we so were just there. So everyone knows an accelerator is something where you have an early stage startup, and they need time and resources and mentoring 
yes. to get started. And so the accelerator programs are meant to get those off the ground, right? Ex yeah, absolutely. Okay. So we were there for a couple of years. We spent a lot of time, learned quite a bit, more than what I learned in MBA, I guess. <laughs> And then uh, also I took up a management consulting job at the time. So went on, worked with several uh, technology companies, uh, both in Bay Area and uh, up in the Seattle. Then finally I got a call from Google and uh, ended up in Firebase. Okay, so it sounds like the, the, the sum of your experience, which is both engineering and an MBA and founding a startup with others, sort of combined is what you, the experience that you have that leads you to program management today. Absolutely, Google. yeah. Oh, it's yeah. an interesting, interesting path. Yeah. I always thought that you can start from zero and then grow. So uh, it helped me when I founded my startup. It was like, we didn't know what to do, but we learned quite a bit. Mm -hmm. And yeah. uh, when I did my management consulting, that was completely new job. So I'm now working with uh, Google at Firebase, it's an interesting experience as well. Yeah. So how did you actually end up at Google? Like what was your transition from that into where you are now? Great question. So uh, incidentally, today today was the day last exactly last year I was interviewing at Google, October. Okay. So, so your anniversary of anniversary mm -hmm. at Mountain View, I guess. So I got a call from recruiter all of all of a sudden. I was traveling, I just a cold call, like, hey Raj, are you interested? We have an exciting opportunity. And that's how it started. So I ended up interviewing with several teams. And I spoke with Firebase team, I think, too. Uh, I was so excited. That I saw the energy in the Firebase team. I think I spoke to uh, engineering managers and a couple of program managers. I could see that they're so happy to be part of Firebase. Mm -hmm. I thought this is a team I need to be in. So okay, that's how I ended so up at Google. The team itself sold you on making the transition. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. And we do have a lot of excited people here uh, at Firebase who just love to help developers succeed, I think is, is fundamentally Absolutely. what we're doing. So where are you originally from? I'm originally from India, Hyderabad. It's uh, a city in the south southern part of it. Now it's uh, almost like a tech capital in southern India. We mm -hmm. have a huge Google campus there as well. So I did my engineering back there and then moved to States, Working, ended up working in several companies and finally here. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so have you been back home since you've moved? Yeah, I've been, I've been visiting once in a two years or a year. Uh, last time, actually went in the summer uh, representing Firebase at the oh, yeah. Firebase India Roadshow. Oh, the Roadshow. Yeah, I did that two years ago. That's, a, that's, that's some yes. fun events. I visited Bangalore and Hyderabad. I was so happy representing Firebase at Hyderabad, my hometown. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that was exciting. Yeah. And you, uh, you saw your parents when you were there last time, right? Yes. I took my parents to Google office oh, you in did? Hyderabad. <laughs> And they were extremely happy. Then only I realized, wow, it's mm. great to be working here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they are so proud of me working in Google. As oh, well. I bet. Yeah, I bet they are. Yeah. And even um, at Google, we have um, Take Your Parents to Work Day. I don't know if that was related. I don't know if they do that all over the world. But in I Mountain don't View, know. They have uh, I mean, I, I wish I could do for, uh, bring them from India, but uh, maybe sometime. Maybe, in the future. Yeah. Well, if they're ever around here, I think they do that like every other year. So yes. definitely uh, see if they're interested in visiting uh, Google headquarters. You like coffee, right? Probably, it sounds like maybe more so than a lot of people. I think like coffee is a very morning ritual really everywhere in the world. Yeah. I started my coffee very early, uh, early days. I think, uh, I, I mean, I don't know when it started, maybe when I was in seventh or eighth grade. In seventh or eighth grade. Yeah, I used okay. to drink a lot of wow. coffee. In the US, so, Usually we don't introduce coffee until maybe like after high school, college. Yeah, I don't I know. know. I, I don't know. I, I don't drink that much coffee. I'm a tea guy. I like tea a lot. Yeah. That's uh, but that's pretty early to start drinking coffee. Yeah, have, in fact, I have an espresso machine at home, so I love to make the coffee, different varieties. But I, I mean, my day won't start without a coffee. So I have to have a coffee before I can do anything else. So okay, uh, what happens if you don't have the coffee? How does I, it go? You know, that's an interesting question. I don't think I ever missed a coffee, so <laughs> I don't know what it looks like. Maybe a headache. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> yeah, but I love different types of coffee. I remember when I was at Google Office, I was interviewing. I see all these espresso machines. Yeah, there's a lot. Man, of, this yeah. place <laughs> looks nice. I just I can go and grab coffee anytime. <laughs>
Yeah, yeah, and we have Coffee Lab as well. So it's like these yeah, dedicated I, I actually, coffee places. I register for the class, in fact. Oh, oh yeah, that's right. They have classes on how to make your own coffee, yeah. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Okay, so you haven't taken that yet? No, I haven't taken that yet. Yeah, okay. now with my extensions out, I probably have some time. <laughs> You have time for a little extra, a little extra <laughs> recreation. Yes. You have a book challenge for yourself. You read a lot of books, right? Yes. So tell me about that. Why, uh, why this particular challenge for yourself? For the last few weeks, I've been trying to read a book once a week. So my challenge is to read at least uh, 100 books in the next coming few months. So okay. I'm on to my sixth book. So mostly I'm reading uh, self-development books like uh, Grit, uh, which is written by Angela Duckworth, which is very interesting on how you can influence the human behavior to do better things. So I've been reading uh, that for the last couple of weeks. Yeah. Okay, and then um, uh, I believe you 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 mentioned before that you read uh, you read Peak as well. Yes, uh, and that's about what what is that one about? So that's also again how do you master a skill? Uh, if you recall, like there was a ten thousand hours. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. practicing something for ten thousand hours to become an expert. Yes, okay. and this book talks about how we can actually deliberately practice certain things so that you can get better, not just doing the repeating the same things again and again but it, it shows you a different way to do the same things better and better. Okay, so if you're trying to improve at something, it's not just repeating the stuff you already know, which is helpful, but it's also about finding areas of uh, growth or development that, are, that, that, that you need in order to progress, mm -hmm. yes. practicing those very mm -hmm. intentionally. Yes, and there's a lot of research she has done. So it talks about experiments, how they do different things, how we can make smaller minor changes to get better at things. Uh, so you read a lot about self-development, um, which is good for developing oneself, obviously. Uh, is there more to it than that? Like, is, 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 is it, does it end with you or is there something else? Yeah, in fact, uh, my motivation for reading all these books is I work with uh, small kids uh, at my local school. Uh, in fact, I teach uh, math for K3 to K5 kids at uh, local elementary school. Okay. One of the challenges, these kids are amazing, but it's also very hard to get to their level and teach them and explain the concepts. I'm not a teacher by profession or practice, but I thought I want to find a way, learn how I can make them succeed in their math curriculum. And in fact, these books, though they are not geared towards uh, these little kids, but I do find a lot of techniques that help me to teach them better. So for example, what have you learned that um, would normally be self-development but can be applied to developing others? One of the things, I think especially in the math, right, uh, foundations is uh, very important. People need to understand. There is a million ways to solve a problem, but. Mm -hmm. Each kid does their own way of doing things. But if I'm trying to box them up and doing, this is the one way, fastest way to do it, what happens is they try to apply the same technique for every single problem. Okay. And, and what I learned from some of these books is there's definitely a better way to do the same thing. So. Okay, so it's it, it, teaching students to think openly about a problem. Yeah. It's not just one correct answer, but there could be multiple paths yes. to get to it. Well, I hope uh, you have another year to uh, see extensions through to another nine, maybe not, uh, not li at least another nine. I want to say another 12 extensions. How, how does that sound? Is that is that a good target? Yes, we want more extensions. So if you have any ideas, keep us informed, all those ideas, so we can actually build those for you. Go check that out. Go to the Firebase um, uh, website, firebase.google.com. And also, where should people send their ideas? Uh, Firebase support? Firebase right? support is the best way. OK, best way. so that would be a feature request. Yes. OK, so go to the Firebase support page, file a feature request. Tell us what you think extensions should be built. Well, Raj, that's all the time we have today. Thanks for joining me on the show. And thank you for tuning in today. Be sure to subscribe right here on the Firebase channel on YouTube for more great video content. Ask Firebase, meet Firebase, tutorials, and more. And I'll see you next time.